So here's the idea. Given rhombus prime with coordinates p negative 3, 5, and u 7, negative 1, find the equation of diagonal RZ. Now, this is how, what should be going on in your head each time. And if this takes a long time to do, that's going to be a problem. All right? These are things that are automatic. You now have an extended time to study all the properties. There's no reason why, all right, it should take the amount of time, an extended amount of time. There should be plenty of time for you to do it if you do it instantaneously. And this is the idea. Rhombus. As soon as you see rhombus, okay, that means all sides are congruent. That's the definition. So if we want to use distance formula, we can do that. All right. It also means diagonals are perpendicular, all right, which is uh, negative reciprocals for slope. The diagonals also bisect the angles. Diagonals also bisect the angles. All right. Now, I then look at the vertices they give me, P and U. And I look at my original quadrilateral, and I determine whether it is a side or a diagonal they're giving me. All right? P and U are not consecutive, so therefore it's a diagonal. So these are all things that should be going on through your mind when you're doing these. All right? So negative 3, 5 is up here. 7, negative 1 is down here. Okay. So there we go. Okay. Now, the equation of diagonal RZ. So there's RZ. All right. Makes a right angle. So I got negative reciprocals. So if I look at this one, I'm going over 10 and down 6. So the slope of that diagonal is negative three-fifths, something you've been doing for several years now and should be automatic. So that means the slope of the other diagonal, which is perpendicular, would be five-thirds. All right? So y equals five-thirds x plus b. Or y minus y1 equals five-thirds x minus x1. Point slope. All right? That means we need a point. All right? And this is when you this is when you separate yourselves as an honor student. A rhombus, you have to remember, is a special type of parallelogram. And for a parallelogram, the diagonals bisect each other. All right? And as soon as you think of bisectors, you should be thinking of midpoints. All right. So that means that point of intersection is the midpoint. All right. So when I add negative three plus seven, I have four. Half of four is two. All right. Five plus negative one is four. Half of four is two. So the midpoint is two, two. All right. So if it's point slope equation, it would be y minus two equals five thirds x minus two, and you're done. Y equals MX plus B. Remember, when you're doing that, you replace the Y and the X with the point. All right. 2 times 5 thirds is 10 thirds. Uh, 2 minus 10 thirds is negative 4 thirds. Making my answer Y equals 5 thirds X minus 4 thirds. All right. So if it just says equation, you can pick either one. But if it says slope intercept or point slope, make sure you do it. All right? Given rectangle LUFA where L is found at the origin. All right? Where's the origin? What are the coordinates of the origin? You can either type it in or yell it out. Good, Tom. Zero, zero. All right? So basically, I know that that's zero, zero, so I got a point, all right? Now it says LUFA's diagonals intersect at S, whose coordinates are 5.5, negative 1. 
So that starts with my sketch. Zero, zero is L. S, okay, is 5.5, negative 1. All right, so I got that. I got two points. All right, now you have to remember going back to here, properties, remember a rectangle is also a parallelogram. All right, a rectangle is also a parallelogram. So its diagonals bisect each other, which means that's a midpoint. So now we're working the other way to find the other endpoint. All right, so you have to go back to where we did coordinate midpoint, and you have to remember that that's 11, negative 2. All right, and that's going to be point F. Everybody good with that? All right, so we're, that's from the beginning of the year when we did coordinate midpoint and we work back. All right, so that's the coordinates of F. Boom, I'm good to go. Crank that one. It now says point A is located at 8, negative 6. So 8 is between those and negative 6 is down here. All right, find the equation of side AF. All right, so I'm trying to find that equation. Slope, 8 to 11 is 3, negative 6 up to negative 2 is 4. So the slope, I'm going to come back here, y equals mx plus b, my slope is 4 thirds. Remember the x and y come from a point. It can be either point, so it can be a or f. It's not going to matter which. I'm going to pick a. It doesn't really matter why, they both have negatives. So I'm going to go with negative 6 equals 4 thirds 8 plus B. All right. 4 thirds times 8 is 32 thirds. I subtract that from negative 6. I got negative 50 over 3. Don't be afraid to write it as an improper fraction. So the equation of side AF is Y equals, all right, 4 thirds X minus 50 thirds. All right, now, it now says find the equation of diagonal AU. All right, U is going to be up here somewhere, and we have to get the equation of AU, but we don't know where. Well, somebody tell me out there, AU is also going to go through what point? What other point is AU going to go through besides A and U that we already have listed? Remember, it's a diagonal, so what other points are going to go through? S. Good job, Taylor. Thank you. It's going to go through S. So those are my two points. So I'm now going to find the equation, and I'm going to separate this so we can keep it clear. C. All right. AS is going to be 5.5, negative 1, and 8, negative 6. All right. 5.5 over to 8 is 2.5. Negative 1 over to negative 6, down to negative 6 is negative 5. When we're done converting the decimal, we have negative 2. Everybody good with that? So the slope is negative 2. Again, it's not going to pick, it's not going to matter which point we pick. So we have S and we have A. Somebody out there tell me which point are we going to pick, S or A? Which one's going to be easier for us to do, S or A? Good job, Mackenzie A, because it doesn't have any decimals in it. They both have positives and negatives. A doesn't have decimals. So I'm going to use negative 6 for Y and 8 for X. So negative 6 equals negative 2, which is the slope, times 8 plus B. All right? So negative 2, 8 plus B. Negative 2 times 8 is negative 16. I add that, I get 10. And I have a really nice equation. All right, I have a really nice equation. That's going to give me y equals negative 2x plus 10. So that's y equals negative 2x plus 10. All right. So.
So now the last part is we want to figure out exactly where U is. Well, we know AS goes through U. All right, we know AS goes through U. And we also know LU goes through U. All right. Unfortunately, we don't know the coordinates of U. All right, so we can't do that. But, all right, UF is going to go through U. UF is going to go through U. All right, and here's where properties of diagonals kick in. The angles of a rectangle are right angles. So that means the slopes of those two sides would be what? What would the slope of a, what would be the relationship between AF and UF? Negative reciprocals. Good job, negative reciprocals. All right. So AF, it's going over three and up four. So the slope of that was four thirds. We did that before. All right. So that means negative reciprocals. The slope of UF would be negative three fourths. Good job. All right. Now, what's the only point we know that's on UF? We don't know what U is. It's segment UF. So what point do we know? What's the only point on line UF we know? Rhymes with meth. F. Good job, Mia. F. All right. So that means we're going to use that point 11, negative 2, and that slope. So Y equals MX plus B. All right. Negative 2 equals negative 3 fourths, 11 plus B. All right. When I multiply 11 times negative 3 fourths, I get negative 33 fourths. When I add that to negative 2, I got 25 fourths. And that's my B. So my final answer would be Y equals negative 3 fourths X plus 25 fourths. All right. Are you going to have a problem like that tomorrow with all that in it? No, but these are the ideas, and I'm trying to create problems that cover as many ideas. All right, so go through this and start listing things. All right, everybody good? All right, let's move on to Fritz. Given a triangle, Fritz connects the midpoints of the triangle to create a new triangle. He then repeats this with the new triangle. What is the relationship between the sides of the third triangle and the original triangle explained using injection? Now, the one thing I would suggest when drawing triangles out and doing this is draw them as scalene. All right, equilateral triangles aren't going to tell us a lot. Where did I get the negative three-fourths come? All right, Con the slope of AF was four-thirds. UF and AF were negative reciprocals. All right, because they're perpendicular. So the slope of that was four-thirds. The slope of UF would be negative three-fourths. All right, so that goes back to the negative reciprocals that we talked about earlier. All right, so we got that one done. All right. Given a triangle, Fritz connects the midpoints of the triangle to get a to create a new triangle. He then repeats this with the new triangle. What is the relationship between the sides of the third triangle and the original triangle? Explain using conjecture. All right, so I start with a scalene triangle. All right. And I kind of eyeball the midpoints and do that. All right. And then it says do it again. So I eyeball the midpoints there. All right. So we'll call this A, B, and C, D, E, and F, G, H, and I. All right. Well, numerically, right, the mid segment's half the opposite side, right? Well, the mid segments of the, the creating the third triangle would be half of that. All right. So what's half of a half? One. What? What would half of a half be? One fourth. Good job, guys. One fourth. So we know the lengths are one fourth. All right. We also know mid segments are parallel to the opposite side. So, for example, 
ED is parallel to BC. All right. But for the same reason, GH is parallel to ED. All right. Does the same thing show up twice? Yes. However, we cannot use transitive property. That's for equality and congruence. And this is parallel. All right. So since it shows up twice, the conclusion we would draw is BC is parallel to GH. All right. Lines parallel to the same line are parallel. All right. So that's what we mean by conjecture. And then over here, the one fourth the length, all you say is mid segment equals one half the opposite side or the side it does not touch. All right. But notice it didn't say prove, it just said explain using conjecture. All right, everybody's good. All right, so let's do the last one, which is a proof. Given a rectangle Puma, Melinda connects the midpoints of Puma to cre create quadrilateral frill. Segments IF and RL intersect at point Z. Prove RIZ is congruent to LIZ. So we start with a rectangle Puma, all right? And they don't tell us anything about where, what is, and what's the longest side, which means we can put the vertices everywhere we want. All right. It says Melinda connects the midpoints of Puma to, to create quadrilateral frill. So I eyeball the midpoints. F, R, I, L. Now, if you do get a proof on Tuesday's quiz, obviously it'll be fill in. So those points will be in there, but you're going to have to make the sketch. So the sketch goes, all right? So I connect the midpoints to create quadrilateral frill. What type of quadrilateral is frill based upon what we did this week? Without doing any slope, without anything, just got to memorize it. What type of quadrilateral is frill? Rhombus. Thank you, Mackenzie. So frill is a rhombus. And automatically, what should kick in with a rhombus? Diagonals are perpendicular. All right. Diagonals bisect the angles. All right. Sides are congruent. And then from parallelogram, the diagonals bisect each other as well. Okay. Now you look at what they're trying to prove, which is angles congruent. All right, which is angles are congruent. It says segments IF and RL intersect at point Z. So I draw in IF and RL. And they intersect at Z. Well, that means that's a right angle if they ask us that, but they don't ask us that. They ask us to prove RIZ is congruent to LIZ. All right. Ding, ding. Diagonals bisect the angle. Okay? Now, could you do this with triangles? Absolutely. But we're going to try to keep it as short as possible using what we have here. We haven't talked about any congruent sides or angles, so don't feel like you have to. So we start with, in our proof, all right, rectangle Puma. Given. All right? along with F, R, I, L midpoint. So that's both given to us. All right. And then we said, okay, frill was a rhombus. All right. And you just got to explain why. The midpoints of a rectangle, there's no real theorem to it. Okay. So we're moving past that. Midpoints of a rectangle form a rhombus. All right. So when you have a fill in proof, if you forget what the theorem was or whatever it is, you can always explain what it is. So frill is a rhombus. All right. Well, guess what? We can then say angle RIZ 
congruent to LIZ. All right, angle RIZ is congruent to LIZ, properties of runs. Boom. So the only difference between the third one and the fourth one is the fourth one is more formalized. So if you get a proof, okay, so if you get a proof, realize it may not be the traditional proof triangles congruent proof. All right. Before we talk about graph paper, everybody good with those four? There will be a video posted later of these, so you can go back and look at them. And under that posting, if you have any questions, feel free to leave any questions that you might have missed. In terms of graph paper, for tomorrow, okay, tomorrow there's no live stream. All right, there'll be an assignment posted. It's ratios and proportions. All right, it'll be posted. If you have questions about it, feel free to ask. It's due Monday at midnight. It's just ratios and proportions. So in other words, three-fourths, all right, equals X over 9. All right, three-fourths equals X over 9. And you know from all the years of doing proportions, 4X equals 27, X equals 27 over 4. So that's all it works with. So that's what it is. You'll distribute it tomorrow. You'll get it tomorrow, whether you're in class or you're at home. I'll post it in the morning. It's due Monday at midnight. There's absolutely no geometry necessary for it whatsoever. Okay? Now, with regards to the quiz, again, Tuesday after school for everybody. All right? And it'll be a big window. It'll be a big window. All right? So if you have an issue, if you have a, a, some type of practice, if you have a performance, if you have a doctor's appointment, it'll still be open when you get home. All right, so it'll be open. Okay, if you need graph paper, if you're going to need graph paper, which is fine, but obviously you can't submit it. All right, if you need graph paper, all right, grab sheets tomorrow in class. I'll put them in the front of the room. All right, grab sheets tomorrow. They'll be in the front of the room. All right, so if you're going to be home on Tuesday, if you're gonna, if you're at, if you're virtual tomorrow, if you're hybrid tomorrow, you can grab it on Tuesday. I'll have it out on Tuesday as well. But if you're an A student, you're gonna be in tomorrow. And you're gonna need graph paper. I'll try to produce some graph paper and and put it up in the stream if you need it. But uh, if you can, just grab graph paper tomorrow if you're gonna need it. Okay, everybody good? All right, I'll be in my office hour at 1:40. There's also virtual math lab. So if you have any questions from 1.40 to 3 o'clock, I'll be available. Guys, stay safe out there. Enjoy yourselves. And we'll talk to you this time tomorrow. Actually, a little earlier. Have a good day. You too.